I also haven't got anything set up. Damn. Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome <laughs> to In the Light of the Moon. I am here because, unfortunately, Alice has fallen ill. Yeah, the summer has come to Britain, and now Alice has heat stroke. Uh, so... I guess we'll get working on getting Alice an AC or something. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's a thing. So, um, I'm not in this game, but I am going to do the announcements and then hand over to all these wonderful people. So, let's do that super quick. First of all, there's no such thing as social distancing. Bin it. Doesn't exist. Physical distancing. We can still be social, and these are the tools. Discord, Twitter, YouTube. Get all the things. Um, uh, yeah, go and, go and be on all of them. They're great, honestly. Amazing. Love it. Great content. A+. Plus, 10 out of 10. Would make again. Uh, also, uh, check out our sign-up form. Uh, right now, we're probably full for this season, but all of the uh, sign-up stuff that you uh, that you put on the sheet will influence where I put the viewer games next season. So feel free to hop on in and 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 help that. My voice is going. Oh goodness. Okay. Ugh. Next, sponsors. Check out Mage Hand Press. Mage Hand Press with all of your expansions for 5e covered. With 25% off on all of their PDFs at the moment, uh, you can have a ton of fun whilst you're physical distancing. Also, check out their Faith Folio uh, expansion for 5e on Wednesdays at 6pm EDT with Mackenzie DA as the DM. Also check out the Deck of Many. The Deck of Many with a brand new Kickstarter open this month, uh, which has already been fully funded. In fact, it's already been... I don't know, a million percent funded or however much they need these days. It's uh, $500,000, I think, already. Oh, that was the latest goal. Information, information, information. The Kickstarter is really cool. Go and check it out. Level 6 to 9 SRD spell reference cards and tarot cards, all animated for your viewing pleasure. Uh, also, there's a bunch of other stuff that the Kickstarter is giving away as well. They're going ham. It's great. Everything's great. Also check out Hero Forge. Oh wait, Humblewood, Thursday, 6 p.m. EDT. That's a deck of many things. Great. Hero Forge. Wednesdays, 2 p.m. EDT. You can find me and Alice drinking a shit ton of coffee and uh and making characters in full colour on the Hero Forge thing. Uh the Hero Forge 2.0 colour mini creator thing. Beta tool. Great. Check it out. Lots of fun. Great minis. Um, also, last but most certainly not least, we have Dungeon Fog. Dungeon Fog, that's not how the command works. Dungeon Fog, with all of your stuff for map making, create beautiful comprehensive maps as you update the map and add assets to the map. Uh, your DM notes update for you. When you update to premium using our special code to attack for a 10% discount, you get access to even more assets to add to your map. It's fantastic. Y'all, you're going to have a great game. Thank you very much to Holly, who dove in in the last hour, I think, to come and play. Uh, and uh, y'all have a bunch of fun. I'm outie. Thanks, Scrat. Set up the commands that I didn't do before we went live. Thanks, I believe in Scott. you. I believe in you. <laughs> oh, just, good. My web captioner thinks... Sphinx Scrat is Sphinx Cat. So you are now a Sphinx Cat in my mind, Same thing. Scrat. That's a fake creature. There, there are worse things yeah. to be. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's great. Excellent. Well, welcome everyone to tonight's session of In the Light of the Moon. I am your uh, gamekeeper, also the Alpha, Kaya Gaston. Find me on Twitter at Crick Charisma. Uh, let's go around. This feels so foreign because I usually am not the one who's the first one talking. Uh, let's go around and uh, get introduced to our lovely players. We'll start with the ever lovely Lily Sparks. Oh, hi. Oh my God, I'm still lovely, even though Alice isn't doing the announcement. I had That's to. Good it's, to know. I've heard it like 10 times, so it's like, how could I not? Thank you. We all miss Alice tonight, but um, yeah, I'll do my best to Reese alone without her. Uh, I don't know how Reese is going to take it, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, my name is Lily Sparks. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Lily Sparks with an X. I do lots of streaming things, and I have links on my Instagram and Twitter to all my streaming things. Um, yeah, most notably, I'm doing a DMs day here at the Academy on Saturday, so you can catch me here Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern. We will be playing Luxury Cruise Guaranteed, one of my favorite one-shots that I've written. So tune in for that. It's going to be a lot of fun and excited to... Awoo with you tonight. 
All right, awesome. Uh, let's go on over to uh, Amy. Amy, how are you doing? I'm here. I'm Amy. Uh, I am a variety streamer here on Twitch. I also do D&D over my channel, and I'm going to be playing Nova tonight, who is a spooky. Excellent. Uh, Izzy. Hi there. Uh, my name's Izzy, or Isabel, but uh, I'm going to be playing uh, uh, Jennifer Carmine, who is the Divine. As for uh, streaming on Twitch, I've never done this before. First time. Oh, crap. I didn't know yeah. that. Welcome. No, I've just lurked in Scrack chat for a while, and I was just like, yeah, this sounds fun. And you were treated to my train wreck of an intro. Welcome to Twitch streaming at its finest. <laughs> God? <laughs> Our fey deity has, has spoken. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm excited to be here. That, um, that, that's about it. <laughs> Excellent. All right, we'll finish it off with Holly. Holly, thank you so much for short notice popping in on the game. For sure. Uh, introduce you and where we can find you. Uh, I'm Holly uh, Sageophilia. You can find me on Twitter and periodically cropping up on this channel. Uh, I have streamed all of once in my life, so don't follow me on Twitch. Um, today I will be playing Carl, who is a ghost, uh, formerly zombie, formerly just very, very tired and still very tired. And you said last, but you are going to put your own introduction in there, right? I started with it. I, I'm already, you already know who I am. And if you haven't, you don't need to know. I'm not that great. <laughs> it's a lie. That's a lie. I couldn't unmute fast enough. Objection. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I'll reintroduce myself. Hello, everyone. I'm Kaya Gasson. I'm your alpha for today's session of In the Light of the Moon, a tweaked monster of the week game that depicts werewolves in not their monstrous forms but in their blessed and chosen by a higher deity with complete control and all their badassery included because i love werewolves um our last session we was a little bit heavy um as the the pax alpha in the town of silver moon uh decided to burn uh use the spark that makes her the alpha of this pack uh to burn the corruption that had taken root um, in the town to try and, and give it a chance to heal. Um, weakening the pack a little bit as they are now alpha-less and uh, in a little bit of mourning. Um, the, the team went on a, a slight errand um, to deal with some weird uh, spore fungus thing that had taken root outside of uh, the mountain range and had come back to take uh, some downtime uh, Pan, our lovely Alice, um, I'm going to say is taking some time for herself, uh, to, you know, after after losing their alpha and close friend Jay. And we will go uh, now to Reese. Lily, what is Reese up to? Reese isn't ready for this. Um, Be ready. Oh. This is all we have. <laughs> We're doing it live. <laughs> so... We're going to say Pan probably just kind of like stepped out a little bit. And I feel like Reese has just been maybe on an hourly or two hourly basis, just like texted like thumbs up question mark, waits for a response. It takes a little bit of time as Pan flips through her book of emojis to decipher what Reese's texts mean. And she'll 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 send back um another thumbs up Ooh, followed by I I just need some time. Pan has never needed time away from Reese and so Reese just sends another thumbs up emoji and then she sits there in her room and stares at her blank walls and <laughs> is like we'll probably do a google search about like you know after maybe about a day after of just staring at the walls we'll maybe do a google search like how to make friends question mark oh buddy or how much time do people need question mark <laughs> during morning <laughs> <laughs> no i think the question would just be how much time do people need because all of, all pan said was that she needed time so she'd just be like 
I don't know how much time that is. Um, but then she'll, you know, pick herself up and go and walk Jazzy and probably have some cuddles with Jazzy. Uh, and probably at some point stop by the library to check in with uh, Almanada. I love you. Because you were going to go to the library anyways. This is if you knew. I know. I did kind of want to be like Reese tries to do some research on what to do with mourning and somehow pulled up a booklet of what to do when a dog loses its best friend. <laughs> that probably <laughs> happened. Starts using like the wrong things for, but that was just the rabbit hole I went down. Uh, okay, so you head on over to the library. Uh, you enter through the, the main front doors, walking past uh, the mundane uh sections you know the ya novels the history the fictions continuing to the back to the staff only door that leads to a staircase down into the the real library that of silver hollow um that holds all the information that the the pack has kind of compiled over the past couple of centuries um, not all, not all the information that there is in the world, but enough to at least get you in trouble or at least out of trouble. Um, you find Amanada. She is uh, in the kind of like a quiet section of the library, and looks up and says, "Oh, Reese, just the person I was hoping to see. H how are you doing?" I just need some time. She like, <laughs> damn it. She looks at you and kind of just like nods and is like, I, I think we all need some time, but I, That's what I'm, I heard. but I'm afraid time isn't always on our side. And I've that too. Yeah. Um, I've been, uh, I've been reading through the the tome. I've been well doing the best I can. It actually physically hurts to touch this thing, so it, I have to go and kind of in spurts. But it it almost is like like a like a, a record book. Like I guess you could say like Bad Guy's Diary, you know, where it depicts kind of the actions of the different followers of this thing called the Corruption. And this corruption can be in like multiple forms. And so it seems like these followers are trying to, they try to kind of bring honor to it in their own way. Some take it in a more literal form, like corrupting the body and like filth and sickness, like the black plague. The black plague was one of these followers that was the French portion of this. And, you know, others see it as causing strife and war. So their goals were to create conflict. Our Marius seems to be relatively new to the game and she'll kind of hold up the, the book and she's trying to use like a cover so that she's not physically touching it. And you see kind of towards the back, um, more common entries but they don't date back very far about five to ten years he seems to be kind of on the ladder wanting to bring his own kind of strife but he's doing it through like a manipulation so we know he was one of these divine one of these holy people and he threw manipulation was seduced and fell and so in his mind he wants to make as many people fall or corrupt essentially the holy and the sacred and, and make it unholy just as what happened to him so he's kind of waging war on the, the do-gooders tearing down neutralizing or turning to his will those that he deems good. Uh, he's relatively new, like I said, but he himself is very old. 
he's been around for a very long time and the corruption is feeding off of that experience and feeding off of that wisdom that he has. So he's new to corruption, but he's not new to this plane. So he's weakening people like us in hopes that when he amasses more power, he can not have people like us interfere. That's why he figured he could either corrupt Jay into making her think that she wanted her power more than she wanted to protect us, or he was going to make Jay make the final sacrifice. Either way, it was going to weaken us. So, Aminata, mm -hmm. I know you might not remember this, but I'm like the newest member of the group and I'm 17 and uh, just so you know, I recorded all of that on audio so that I can send it to Pan later because I know that she's going to be, you know, more adept at taking care of this kind of thing. Um, but what you said is a lot. And how I'm understanding it is it's kind of like a pyramid scheme of evil magic where like one dude is at the top and he's like corrupting other people who are corrupting other things. And then it's just kind of this trickle down effect, something like that. She'll kind of look at you and be like, that's a very apt analogy. Yeah. Okay. And at the top of that pyramid is this entity. And at the mm -hmm. next stage of that pyramid is Marius. And Marius is working his way down to his pyramid. Marius is like a regional manager. Yeah. Yeah. Just way worse. Yeah, super way worse. Super way worse. But I know that was a lot, but I think I have some good news at least. I like good news. Uh, while I've been hitting... Uh, this tome to try and see if there's any more insights that I can get. Malkin's been trying to do some research on some other stuff in the library to hopefully find some rituals or weapons or allies that we could use to try and defeat this person. And he, they found, they found a, I know it sounds a little cheesy, but they found a sword. And they it might give us a little bit of an edge. Um, it's a moon kissed sword. That sounds like a werewolf sword. It sounds, yeah, it sounds pretty badass, doesn't it? Um, he, they think it's in the peaks of the mountains in Arizona. So it's gonna be a little bit of a hike. Um, you want me to hike to Arizona from Colorado? Well, I'm, we're going to get you there. I'm not having you go out and thumb a ride to Arizona, but it's going to be a bit of a travel. I got it. Um, but don't worry. I, I know Pan is, is taking some time and, and, and she needs that. I, I don't want to rob her of that, but Good news is we, we have some allies. Um, I know, uh, I know that, um, we're probably going to need someone who follows the moon. We, we think the moon of, as just a, 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 you know, a sphere thousands of miles away, but to us it's, it's different. It, it has sway, it has power, it's natural, it's constant, it's pure. And there are people who are called to her. She's been known as many things throughout the years, you know, Mani, Selene, Gaelic, throughout history and cultures, but there are still followers and the, the lichen is technically a, a follower of the moon. You know, they draw their presence. So I, I have an al ally because I think we're going to need one of those followers to get into the sacred site. Um, uh, they are, uh, they're in town. Uh, I can... I can give him a call. Maybe you can meet him down at the at the diner. If that's yeah, okay. at the diner. I can have them come here. Maybe here is okay. better. Yep. No. Nope. Like, don't let my parents see them. Okay. 
I, will I don't want my them... parents to know I have other, or I don't want them thinking I have other friends. Because what if someday they meet Pan and I want them, you know, Pan's my only, like my best only friend. So if they see me with someone else, they might think that I have other friends and that would just be the wrong impression because I don't, so. Do not want more friends or do you think that you can't have more friends? You know, Amanada, I feel like this moon touch sword is really important for us to go get right now. Yeah, let's put a let's put a pin in that. And we'll we'll discuss that later. And she kind of the look on her face isn't necessarily worry, but she's like, oh man. <laughs> Amanada and I haven't spoken that much yet, and she, nope. don't think she knows this is my vibe. <laughs> yeah, nope. Jade one hundred percent knew that vibe and was like would have known what to do and I'm a little sad right now that she's not here to help you with that, but um, okay. yeah, so Amanada will go and go yep, mm-hmm, let's get to business and she'll uh, go and she'll call up uh, I have where are my divines? Don't mind me, I have seven pages of, of notes uh, Is Jennifer my divine? All right, she's gonna give uh, Jennifer a call, and I believe Nova, you are hanging out with Jennifer in the town of Silver Hollow because efficiency. Um, uh, she'll give you a call and tell you to meet you meet her down by the library, and she'll tell you to go to the back entrance for safety purposes. I guess we're. Uh, I guess we're going to the library. Um. Gosh, the, getting called here and some force and then getting automatically having to go to the library. It's it all seems kind of like a big mystery. <laughs> Didn't we usually ask us to go to the back entrance? No, For that's the thing. I, I That's what gives it a little bit more fun. I, okay. I don't know if I can put this on my blog, but I want to. <laughs> I think this might be one of those times that it, it misses the blog. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, you're right. Okay. We, we can we can reword it so it doesn't sound quite so like possibly murderous. That's true. There's a very real chance we yeah. could get ganked. Well, I've got my knife. I've got my bow. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> not let's go to the library and die together all right great friendship let's die together <laughs> <laughs> all right you all uh set out um i assume that you're probably staying someplace in town uh you can walk to the library it's not i have my trusty map but i'm not unrolling it now although it hasn't been out in like weeks but um you find the the library uh pretty easily uh nothing but the best adventures for y'all getting into town and then instantly going to the library um didn't even finish my coffee didn't even finish a coffee uh you're ushered in through the the back entrance where you are introduced to uh reese uh reese uh, why don't you go ahead and describe what your character looks like currently i feel like Oh yeah, Reese is definitely just like, this is a bookshelf right here. And Reese is just kind of like hunched over, presumably looking at books. Um, but what you would see is like a six foot two girl, teenager, she's 17, uh, but basically picture Slender Man, if Slender Man was an Asian girl. So she has this really long drapey black hair. She's very pale. Um, she's very like long and gangly. And she just like has all her hair over her face. And she's just like, looking at the bookshelf and then she sees her I think approach. there is a movie about that. <laughs> there is, I think. <laughs> it's grudge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then when she hears you two come in, she'll like turn around and she'll get one of these on her face. She's really trying. Really trying. Oh. Hi. I'm Reese. Um, hello, Reese. I'm Jennifer. Um, Look, looks over at Amanada. Uh, um, just, I didn't know we were going to be meeting a teach teenager. She is, there's, there's more 
to her than meets the eye. You know the whole come in the back entrance is a bit more creepy with a teenager involved? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, it's... I... Don't worry, I have a checklist. And Reese will, like, pull out a pile of notebooks. Um, <laughs> notepads that uh, say various things on them, like shopping and um, <laughs> Reese's emojis. Reese basically has not been without Pan for like this entire time, and Pan's like her mentor, so mm -hmm. she doesn't know what to do. So she's just copying everything that Pan does, and is gonna try and uh, embody Pan. And she'll pull out a, a notebook and that says um, stuff question mark. And uh, she'll check something off a list and just say, um, "Yep, yeah, back entrance to library. That, that's 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 written here. So, check. Did I do that right? I don't know. Oh, buddy. Oh, okay. buddy. Um, look over at Nova. I think I understand why we got called. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think I think I get it. No. Um. Well, you yeah. have supernatural powers. Uh, yeah. Can you follow the light of the moon? I, uh, <laughs> that, mm, I think mm. that, would you say that's you, Nova? I think that's more me. No, that's you. That's yeah. definitely you. Yeah, I mean, it was cool meeting you and it's, your powers do sound interesting, but I, yeah, I mean, when one night I go out for a nature stroll and then, end up in a beam of moonlight and then getting handed a bow. It's totally normal. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not. It's That's not. like every other full moon for some people, apparently. You know? Um, and how about you two describe your characters for us? What do they look like? Uh, go ahead. Um, so Nova is a very much androgynous individual. They are about like five eleven, and well, they would be five eleven if they didn't have these giant like goth boots on that put them up to like six three or something like that. Uh, they have unnaturally dark eyes; like their eyes are almost entirely black, and um, they basically very much embrace the whole. My eyes are really dark. I'm gonna look like something of a demon just to unnerve as many people as possible. All right. And what does Jennifer look like? Um, well, Jennifer is uh, not as tall. She's about 5'8". Like um, she's got um, she's got uh, fairish features with um, like a wider wider nose. Uh, black hair and with a white streak that goes down uh just almost it's not even it's not white it's just silver um she's fairly it, it, she's pretty unassuming she's got a flannel on uh yeah she's got her yeah she's got a like a flannel on big hiking boots um and some uh, pay, uh, some jeans that have they're wet they're very well worn they're they are very much hiking yeah, these are very much uh jeans that have seen a lot of hikes nice um Aminata, uh kind of leaves the room and comes back in and she's carrying uh, a very like familiar bag for you reese and it's it's pan's kind of go bag and in it, it has the the silver machete that Aminata gave her a while ago, or nope, Malkin gave her, um, and a couple of bottles of Purell, um, a a couple of flashlights. Uh, I think she also puts in like matches. It's literally like an apocalypse bag. Uh, I'm like, how did you get this bag? Um. When I had called for you to come down, uh, I was gonna see if perhaps Pam would have been up for it as well. And she knew that you were going, but she wanted to make sure that you were prepared. And so she um, 
she had had me pick this up earlier. You saw her? Yeah. Was she... okay? I think she's doing about as okay as a lot of us are doing. I need some time. Yes. I mean, we all need time and do things in our own way. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Bye. Um, <laughs> bye. Um, to uh, she'll Lucy will give uh, y'all a car. I assume one of you knows how to drive. Maybe not. Reese. I'll drive. Yeah. I, yeah. Either way. <laughs> or you could switch. Whatever. Um, and uh, a map to to at least Lucy loosely get you to the. Um, the general location of of the start of what is called the Four Peaks Mountain. I went on Wikipedia today, y'all, uh, to look at mountains in Arizona. I don't know why Arizona. I just wanted Arizona. It's, um, it's well, right now it's like late October, so it's cold, ish, hmm. especially at night. Hmm. Um, yeah. In the desert. <laughs> yeah. As we, like, walk towards the car, I'll just be, like, clutching Pan's bag to my chest, and uh, I'll just be like, I called backseat. That's fine. I'll take shotgun, I suppose. I have a shotgun in here if you need it. I, I, I'll set. I've, I've got um, this. She shows the bow. It's very, very, it, it's almost glowing, kind of silvery. Old school shotgun. I like it. What's oh, a old school shotgun? Old school shotgun. Yes, I, I suppose that that is right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Priest gets in the car quickly. <laughs> okay, we'll say that it's like a nice SUV sized thing, so that it's not torture for Reese's seven foot slender man <laughs> body to be put into a two door coupe. <laughs> uh, I was so picturing that image though, just pans bag on her like, chest, like knees up to here, and just, yeah. like hidden. She I probably was... will scrooge up into a little ball anyways with the bag on top, so she's just looking out over the top like this. And this is all you see in the in the rear view mirror is just her in the back, like And y'all feel like you have a giant toddler on t- t- <laughs> You know, it's actually impressive just how small you can curl in a ball. Thank yeah. you. I've, you know, been on a lot of road trips and I've not seen anybody almost as tall as you be able to fit as well as you can. Yeah. Well, my mentor Pan is really small. So I feel like if I get a little smaller like this, I can channel her energy and um, see things from her point of view. You see a lot less from down here. I We, we miss our Alice. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh so so oh. you all take off um it takes a good like half day to a day's drive to to get into the foothills of the the four peaks mountain um we'll say that you left kind of late in the morning and arrive kind of late afternoon the following day. Is there a um, CD player in the car? Of course. Lucy would provide you with nothing but the best. There's I even will... probably an ox court. Oh, questions. Oh, cool. Uh, do I want a CD or an ox court? I'll just like lean forward and lean all the way forward with my very <laughs> long body and mm-hmm. just like while you know, they're in the front seat, just lean between them and just like pop a CD into the thing. And I picture this is like two hours into a mostly quiet road trip because Reese doesn't talk. Uh, So she just leans forward and like pops in the soundtrack. And I'm going to say that it's the soundtrack to Legally Blonde the musical because her mom is super into it and it's the only CD she had. And then she hears the music come on. She does a moment of Oh. Shrinks down again. <laughs> this is music for driving. Um, I I hear uh, road trips. People like music. I I hope you like it. 
don't know if I've ever heard of this. It's, it's nice. Uh, uh-huh. Nova, Nova would start singing along. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask, you said Nova had a question? I don't remember what it was. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, mostly with the driving, Nova would probably be driving far too fast because like, that's the best way to drive. Mm-hmm. Speed limits are minimum, anyway. Speed limits are just suggestions. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's more like guidelines than actual rules. <laughs> also, please don't pay attention. Please don't no, follow no, anything no, that we say. Listen, we are not responsible say. for reckless driving or uh, speeding tickets. Right, That's anything you do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we are um, not responsible. <laughs> not responsible. <laughs> um, you get. Uh, uh, you get to your destination uh, a little later in night, um, probably, or a little later in the day, probably unwise for you to start what could possibly be a, a, a multi-hour hike into a portion of the mountains that you might not know um, very well. And so you kind of get set up in a, a motel on the uh, the outskirts of, of this town uh, outside the foothills. It looks a little... A little sketch, but the rooms are clean. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any uh, any bed bag bed bed bugs. Shit, bed bugs. You know what I mean. Okay. There we go. You know, sometimes I do that. Words are hard. Okay, English is hard. Um, and you do your best to find um, what possible night's sleep. And just because I love creepy hotels, um, we'll say that uh, during the night, you're kind of awoken by a little bit of a a cluttering. These random items are just pushed off shelves. And we'll say uh, it's in Reese's room. You kind of open your eyes, and in the corner you see an honest-to-god ghost. Carl, what do you look like? So Carl is... was a zombie, so is not completely whole-looking. Um, pretty blanched out. You can't really tell any coloration that he once was in terms of hair, eyes. He has a pretty average haircut, just a plain t-shirt, jeans, work boots, and he has really, really badly made brass knuckles that also seem to be slightly ghost-like, and he he is walking, but he seems just very dejected in posture. And doesn't really seem to be looking for anything. Is just sort of haphazardly throwing pillows and that little like hotel cup that you put your toothbrush in, and just sort of like flinging it around. Learning how to unmute. Um, Reese probably relates really hard. (laughs) To relate. <laughs> whoever this is. And I can tell that uh, he's a ghost, right? Like, they're translucent, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, She'll just, you know, see it, watch for a couple seconds, realize he's not paying attention to her or, like, hurting anything, and um, probably just, you know, Blankets up and just scooch on down. <laughs> you do your thing, ghost. Um, Carl would probably eventually work his way over to the backpack and pick it up. Oh, don't, don't, don't <laughs> touch that one. Why? Yeah. That's a go bag, and you don't go anywhere. <laughs> I go places. What makes you think I don't go places? I'm a ghost. It's in my name. I was just thinking that, but I couldn't figure out how to turn it to my advantage. 
<laughs> oh, damn, you got the cup back before I did. <laughs> um, and she will actually, like, nod at that and be like, that is an excellent point. But that bag was very meticulously packed by the best human being on the planet. So please don't disorganize it. She will be upset. Does she like organizing? I pull out one of my notepads and I pull out one that says pan stuff question mark and I flip open the first page and it says organize things and I look up and I say yes. <laughs> so wouldn't it be better if I disorganized it so that when she comes back she can reorganize it? Yeah, but she's not gonna be here. So if you disorganize it now, I'm gonna have to organize it. And then I pull out another notebook that says Reese stuff question mark and I flip <laughs> up the first page and it says you're a mess. And then I look at Carl and I go, I'm a mess. I'm Carl. <laughs> nice to meet you. Dad joke. And Carl will flip a pillow off of the very falling apart scratched up chair that's in the corner and just settle down and stare at the go bag. Does it help you go on? Did she die? I hope not. I don't think so. She says she just needs some time. So I think that um, time will pass and then she will be back. Do you um, know how to die? Kind of. I've killed things, so I've seen how they die. I'm usually more on the other side of things. I am very interested in you being dead, though, because I wonder if, uh, you know, you moved that pillow to, like, sit down in that chair. Was that pillow in your way, or are you just wiling out? And, and Carl, with a very heavy... I am so tired of this parlor trick sigh will just sink through the chair and be sitting on the floor. Did you just sigh? Did did you need that? Do you breathe or were you just whiling out? I haven't breathed in a long time. I think. A lot of smoke and mirrors with you, Carl. Maybe I am just smoke. Or mirrors. I like smoke. Maybe that's why we get along. I am also not organized. That could be it. Mm -hmm. You don't have any organs. No. Mm -hmm. I lost some even before I was a ghost, so. Mm -hmm. uh, the spleen, mm -hmm. apparently it's very tasty. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you, you. I'll know. just hang out here for a while. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. You said yeah, you're good with sure. the death thing, so. Mm -hmm. Hey, Carl. Yeah. Carl, do you know how to make friends? Well, if you kill them, they might become zombies and follow you. That's kind of a friend. Hmm. Reese will pull out her Reese stuff notebook and write, kill friends? Question mark. <laughs> and and then tuck that they away. Ever you know, leave, leave, so. They would never need time. Yeah. Or if they food. were zombies. Yeah. But Pan likes food, so I don't think she would like being a zombie. It's just a different type of food. <laughs> Maybe I try this out on my new friends. Oh no. <laughs> Experimental friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um... I'm gonna go back to sleep because I'm on some kind of super important mission to get a moon kiss sword and I have uh, you know, people here that I have to help do that. Um, you can hang out here. I'm just going to... I'll just throw the soft things around. Yep. And Carl will stand up and continue tossing pillows trying to be the best ghost that Carl can be. Carl is living his best ghost life. <laughs> you know, when I started today, <laughs> I did not know that this was going to happen. 
Mm-hmm. And I couldn't be happier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything so, happens for a reason. Sure does. Um, Reese, you find um, sleep eventually. Carl, you find entertainment in the form of the mass amounts of hotel throw pillows. Uh, Nova and Jennifer, you have no fucking clue that this is happening in the other room. Uh, and you find a, a restful sleep, waking up early, bright and early in the morning. Probably much to maybe Reese's chagrin. I don't know if Reese is an early riser. Reese is not, but she yep. gets up even earlier because her pan stuff notebook says that pan wakes up at 5 a.m. every day. Sure so, does. Yeah, and... She, yeah. Yes, and it it is about as awful as you thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Especially um, with Carl's there. Yeah, it's in a the cold. showers, like just waving the detachable shower thing around the bathroom, just seeing how the water falls. Oh my mm-hmm. God, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. flood the hotel bathroom. <laughs> Perfection. Perfection. Um, your friend is still there, like you said, playing with the shower attachment, uh, staying oddly dry. Much to his chagrin. Um, um, <laughs> I, what I, do you do um, next? Oh, God. <laughs> is there a kitchenette in this motel room? At least a microwave or. Yeah, anything? sure. We'll say it looks like the standard uh, supernatural motel set. Oh, good. <laughs> so. Um, I reach into the go bag, which I packed with some things, including oh, instant pancake mix. In there. Nope. Instant, instant pancake, pancake mix. mix. Okay. And then mm-hmm. I'm going to heat up water in the microwave until it boils. Okay. And I'm going to use that to make the pancakes. You mm-hmm. need milk and eggs and whatever to make pancakes. It's fine. And then uh, I didn't really get to the part where I think about cooking it. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to attempt to cook my watery pancake mix in the microwave. And I don't know what Carl is doing through all of me fumbling through this, uh, but the end result, I'm assuming, is a plate of mushy pancake mix that is wet and shaped vaguely like pancakes and is not I, cooked. I really want to say that the end, the end, whatever, is uh, an explosion in the microwave. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. As an air bubble forms inside this thick, viscous whatever mm-hmm. and gains more heat and steam. And then, mm-hmm. and, and then you open Carl up the microwave, and it's just the microwave. <laughs> yeah. Carl what? <laughs> what? Carl what? Carl pulls his head out of the microwave after mm-hmm. it explodes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, like, uh, fucking nearly headless <laughs> Nick. <laughs> yeah. Hello I, there. I feel like it's just this 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 freeze frame of Reese holding this plate of exploded pancake mix. Mm-hmm. And her long black hair draping over, Carl's face grinning out at her, and she will just grin back and take the plate to her new friend's room and knock on the door. And so they open the door and they see this. Okay. Hi, good morning. Jennifer I need pancakes. Jennifer and Nova, the smell almost hits you before the knock on the door does. As the, the room is next door. And you hear like a, a muffled You're like, what the fuck is that? And then you hear the door open and then you hear a knock on your door and you could smell just the whatever burnt batter that is. Uh, do, and you open do, the door to that. <laughs> before we go on the hike, do you want us to take you to get pancakes? We I can made get pancakes. You you certainly did. <sighs> there it is. <laughs> We can find not pancakes. Cook. Jennifer, I'm not eating that. That's... We can go get pancakes. It's fine. And she'll just chuck yeah, them over her shoulder. I... <laughs> Do you drink coffee? Do you want coffee? We made coffee. I, yeah. Here. And she'll grab an excess mug from her big hiking backpack. And, and uh... It, uh, make uh, Risa a, a cup of coffee. Here you go, dear. Nova would go into their bag and like pull out like two cans of energy juice and also just kind of set one near Reese just in case. It's like, I don't know if you're allowed this, 
But here, if you want. I, oh, 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 <laughs> oh, 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 no. oh, 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 I think neither should neither of us should be parents. I mean, I shouldn't be allowed this either, so this will be fun. Um, <laughs> Carl, did you walk over with Reese, or did you hover over with Reese, or did you? Carl do will casually poke his head through the wall and ask Reese, "Do they eat the pancakes?" <laughs> 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 I'll like pointedly look at the wall behind Carl with the sliding plate, uh, and it's a paper plate, obviously, because it's a motel. Like paper plate and like pancake mush just down the wall, and I'll be like, "Uh huh, yeah, they did. They really liked it. Have you ever tried coffee? It's really hot, but it's really good. And I really feel like my brain is going like 17 miles a minute. Is this what people think? Like, is this what other people are like? Is my am, am I talking too much? Am I talking too much? Is this how people make friends? <gasps> am I saying all of this out loud? Never mind." This I'm, is Lily. <laughs> Carl will step the rest it. of the way through the wall and just look at the at Nova and Jennifer. Just got a bow drawn, just like or yeah, just an arrow knocks. Just like Do you know this person? I'm Carl. Oh yeah, this is Carl. This is Carl. Carl is uh, a ghost. Used to be a zombie, now he's a ghost, and uh, walks through things, but also breathes sometimes and can move things, but also walks through things. So it's kind of like a really strange question of physics and how uh, you know the paranormal interacts with the physical, material world. I did, is that the order of operation? Is it zombie then ghost? I lost a spleen at some point too. I have a question. Is there any other name that you're comfortable with? Because I can't pronounce your actual name. Please. Call me Frank, I guess. Great, Frank. You are quite Frank. Yeah, that was my nickname a long time ago. I will try with Carl. No. No. I'm sorry. I think it sounded good. I mean, I'm dead, so what you call me really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. What we call any of us doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Wow, you are just as dark as Nova. Let's go get some pancakes. <laughs> All right. As, I like you. as you three and the corporeal makes four, head out the door. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a poet. <laughs> I, I do things. Um, and head to what is always near a motel, which is a diner, um, to get uh, get some... They're okay pancakes. They're they're. They're passable pancake, pancakes. They're not pancakes that were in the microwave, so they're like slightly elevated pancakes. Um, and you have uh, a, a breakfast. Um, we'll say that you probably got like some in the back seating, so that maybe your your new ghost friend Carl could have a seat without alerting suspicion. Though I feel like a couple of people in the town, especially the diner owner, have seen you haunt them a few times. You could call it haunting. It's really low effort, vague poltergeisting. It's, 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 it would be arrested for soliciting if it wasn't, mm. or trespassing if it wasn't the fact that you're dead and handcuffs won't work on you. Yeah. <laughs> At least not special ones. And uh, you have some form of a warm, warm meal and discuss what, um, what to do next. Uh, to work out your plan, that thing. Um, and I think we're going to go on a quick bio break before we get into the nitty gritty Monster of the Week stuff. Uh, so you mean Kisher, this was a nitty gritty? <laughs> this was fantastic is what it was. Uh, <laughs> kiss your pets, take a bio, drink water, and we'll Love be back yourselves. in like whatever minutes. Scrap a lot of stuff.
Please enjoy this short advert from our sponsors, The Deck of Many, supporting their new Kickstarter for um, uh, animated moving picture cards. Sorry about that, everyone. For some reason, OBS crashed there. I hope I caught it before the stream dip dipped. Uh, we'll try again with that advert now. with the most powerful spells. Animated spells are back, with level 6 to 9. Each spell card features 8 frames of looping animation that makes the spell come to life, and contains all the spell details on the back. And for the first time, you can divine with a fully animated tarot card deck. Will you read Fortune or Folly? Jane! Hecna's reforming! Not on my watch! Meteor Swarm! Uh... Go to AnimatedSpells.com and back the Kickstarter today.
Well, uh, welcome back, everybody. I realized I did not do my welcome at the start of the show, and I am very disappointed in nobody but myself. Um, thank you for uh, sticking with us throughout the break. Uh, last we left off, our party of three and our corporeal uh, friend Carl, also known as Frank, sat down for breakfast because this is completely normal. Um, and uh, developing a game plan on what to do uh, to hike up into the mountains to find a sacred place and a moon-kissed sword. Um, so what are we up to, folks? So first things first, I have my plate of pancakes in front of me. Um, mm -hmm. But then I also pull out the Reese notebook and the pan stuff notebook and I open them both to the pages that say eat pancakes and I will place them on either side of my plate with my pancakes. And then I will pull out another notebook that says quest stuff question mark um, and I'll open it and it'll be completely blank and uh, I'll look up and I'll say we need to do investigating. I mean, that would make sense, trying to find, find out where this sword is. Mm -hmm. It was, it was yeah. owned by the followers of the moon who left it somewhere sacred. That sounds like your thing, Jennifer. Uh, yeah, I'm still pretty new to all this, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I guess the moon can, you know, leave me there. If I, I, I'm going to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing, but, um. Do any of us really? Is there, like, someone you can, like, ask above or around can we do a seance with the moon Ooh. i i mean <laughs> the only person that well the only being i think i could ask is not visible well can, can i see them is it one of those days where you can kind of see the moon um it's a clear sky in arizona i'll say that yeah you could probably see the moon it is a waning crescent okay it's that's what like... we're gonna go with now so it's it's growing mm. on its way to a full moon yeah okay halfway there um well i mean best i can do is ask um but i think that would be more along the lines of when we get there more of because i know i think we know where kind of need to go but we're not there yet yeah i don't think this diner is going to be where they hide the moon kiss sword you never know there's some really cool Ma diners out there mm -hmm. imagine if it was puts mm -hmm. a knife in the pancakes oh there it is <laughs> we look down at the menu and it's just moon kiss diner <laughs> You know, it is now. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Sure, sure. It is now. Um, so my eyes will just slide over to Carl and be like, so you, um, when you were alive, is, uh, is this where you um, lived? I don't know if that's an offensive question to ask a ghost. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's not offensive, but... He kind of shifts. I, it's been a long time. I don't think I lived here ever. I lived in a lot of places. Did a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Stuff I'm not proud of. Mm -hmm. Well, you um, live. I don't think that's the right word. You exist here now. So, do you have you ever been to the mountains? I passed through them. That's a ghost joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Carl deadpans it. Of course. Does he deadpan the pancakes 
and dead pancakes. pancakes. <laughs> I can't live pan them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you were passing through the mountains, did you ever come across some kind of sacred area where there might have been a moon kissed sword? Never seen a sword, but some teenagers went up there with a Ouija board once. That was really fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they sound like my kind of people. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll say Carl for... <laughs> <laughs> Carl Frank. Um... We'll say that you don't necessarily recall, like, a sacred, sacred site, but you do remember an area on the mountain that has, um, that is kind of known as, like, the, like, Moonstone Landing, where it, the stones around it are a lot light-colored as opposed to, like, the gray or dark rock. Um, and that it's sometimes known to to glow in the moon, um, but it's tough to to get to, and most people don't go there because they always think it's haunted, mainly because sometimes it's just you. There is a place <laughs> on the mountain. Uh, it's got these really glowy rocks. And people don't go there very often because I throw them at them. Uh, it's moonstone, so that's something. No sword there I've ever seen. Could keep a sword there. That would make things a little more dangerous, though. I mean, I don't know about you two, but Carl seems like a very legitimate source of information to me. Absolutely. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I've never met a ghost. Yeah, you have. You met me. Uh, before Carl. <laughs> <laughs> that being said. No, no ghosts have lied to me yet, so I'm willing to trust Carl. Although I am sorry that I knocked an arrow at you. It's not like it would have hit me. It's fine. I uh, it might. So, we'll get into that later. But it is kind of hard to get there um, for people who can't just phase through rocks. I can turn into a giant, like, six-foot werewolf, if that helps. That would help. I'm quite the experienced uh, hiker. I actually have a nature blog. Uh, do, you, do you get online much? Uh, sometimes I go into people's computers and make their internet drop. That's really funny, actually. <laughs> Are you the one like a nature blog? I try to only do it for students at crunch time. Um, so oh, buddy. Oh. No, only when they haven't finished, so then they have a legitimate excuse to give to their professors. They get another week. Okay, there it is. How's Nova doing all this? <laughs> um, when. Carl was telling us about the place. Mm -hmm. um, would Nova be able to read Carl's thoughts to see if they were misleading us at all? I... Uh... <laughs> I don't see why not, but that would have to be something that... Would Carl be okay with possible telepathy? Yeah. Okay. Let me open up Monsters because I have actually not really looked at it because I am a terrible GM. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Objection. <laughs> um, <laughs> sustained. <laughs> Overruled. All right. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. I don't know if anyone else oh, has played that no. game. So, you know, I just want to object to everything. Which one are you on? I got the trilogy for Switch on sale, so I'm working my way through the first one. I played all of them before on DS, but uh, I'm coming back to it again, and 
man, I forgot how much, uh, you know, mucking about there is in that game. It's like, is this a clue? Is this a clue? Is this a clue? Is this a clue? Oh, is this, is this line of questioning not working? Let me just backtrack and do this line of questioning instead. Is Phoenix this a clue? Right. <laughs> I feel like that's what this game is right now. It's like, yeah. is Moonstone? Sword? I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. So why don't you go ahead and roll for your telepathy? Oh no. Because you're weird. Yes, that's 2d6 plus, plus three. you're weird. Yeah. Yes, two plus you're weird. That's a nine. Uh that is a success. So I believe you are able to. Not many of my players get to take telepathy, which is a lot of fun. You can read people's thoughts and put words. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so and it's fine. Um, no, Carl is not misleading you. Um, and just to throw in a little bit of flavor, Carl, what are you currently thinking right now? <laughs> Carl is currently trying to remember the last time that he actually ate pancakes. And he's just really focused on these pancakes and just being kind of disappointed that he has to be around food because he tries to avoid Ooh. it despite having a lot of demeaning jobs in food. He, he enjoyed eating when he was alive and it's been it's been a while. And as the question is posed about this this place, his thoughts shift to it, and him just sitting up there, kind of sad, and just picking up rocks and dropping them as being his haunting and like. <sighs> we should this because we're all giggling public. right now. <laughs> I just dropped in our Zoom chat. I was like, this is why he sabotaged my pancakes. Jacuz. <laughs> wow. You rolled it. It's all um, coming together. So, yes, you, you do trust Carl. And now you feel a little sad for him. No, no, I would look Jennifer. Can we keep Carl, like, after this? Carl, I, can you be with us? Like, I, I go on adventures. I wanted to friends. keep Carl. Carl's his own person he can That's come right. with if he would like. Um, I don't have any objections to it. Objection! We, we need to find a way to let you eat pancakes, Carl. Yeah. I don't know if possession's really in the question right now. Moving on! <laughs> I feel like Reese is just... Like, there's just this moment where uh, she hears Nova ask if they can keep Carl, and in Reese's brain, it's like, that was the first friend that I made since Pam, and now they're gonna go with my other new friends. <laughs> and so she's like, cool, 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 Back to the town that they currently are residing in, which is the same town you reside in. So, oh, like do they reside there? I thought they were just visiting. Well That's nice, okay. A bit, a bit of column A, a bit of column B. I think okay. they're trying to find a home. Okay. Yeah. okay. We're giving as much backstory as a single session could possibly give you. <laughs> We're doing the best that we can. Um, so we have a, a, a loose kind of path based off of Carl's memory. Uh, you do have a, a crudely uh, marked map that uh, Amanada had given you that would kind of give you a starting point. Mm -hmm. um, the best they could do compiling all their lore books and geometry and trigonometry and geolocation. I'm going to try and put in as many swear words as I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, you definitely need your, your hiking boots. Um, you open up your bag, uh, Reese, and in it is is uh, Pan's anorak. Oh, damn it, you beat me to it. Um, her, her arachne, as I call it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um... It would be very comedic on you, but feel free to wear it should you oh, yeah. should you want to. I wear it. Um, with some simple asking, you can find where like the closest you can get to kind of the start of this mountains, where you can kind of park the the whatever you're driving um, to save on time. Um, and so you 
head on out. Uh, Carl in tow. Does somebody open the door for Carl? Is this Carl just very adamantly making sure that he walks through things? Jennifer will hold the door for Carl. Carl He's a like, person. Walk out through the opening. I feel like Reese is tagging along because she has like a moment where she almost puts some of the pancakes in her pocket and then she just like looks at this group of unfamiliar people that she's just met mm -hmm. and then she just goes and she'll like leave the pancakes on the table. Can we get a box? No, we don't need a box. Let's go. No. She <laughs> she will grab a box for Reese and make sure she keeps it in her little cooler that she has. All right. Jennifer Thank secretly you. gets you a box of pancakes. Oh, friends. We're making friends. <laughs> in the light of the moon, bringing you that mushy, funny contacts every week. Um, you set off towards the 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 beginning of these mountains thankfully they're not like we're not traversing the um like the rockies we're not going up like elevation ridiculous um but it's gonna be a, a decent enough uh trail you you start off on uh what clearly looks like uh, a path a trail of some uh it's you know that would take you through like they're really picturesque um uh, you know, scenery that is around you, the greenery uh, that's now turning to uh, orange uh, as the leaves are turning. Fall is here. It's pumpkin spice season, everybody. Um, yeah. Uh, and um, the, the crisp morning air, you know, but you all are ready to go. Carl hasn't felt anything in years. Um, <laughs> and you uh, glide... <laughs> It's a lot sadder than it shouts out. Uh, I'm telling you, I really wish y'all could see our Zoom chat. It's really ridiculous. <laughs> uh, you continue, uh, continue up this mountain, and, and you get to a point where Carl, you you know that it's time to kind of go off the beaten path to get into, um, to start towards you know getting closer to the area that you had described. And um, so traversing off, you're starting to get into like a, the heavy shrubberies now and making sure that you're watching your steps so that nobody either breaks an ankle or slides down a hill. Um, and Carl, you know that you're starting to get close and Reese, even you can start to tell that you're getting close because you can almost feel it like that, like like waves of just warmth are hitting you as that as that pure energy that normally you, you feel in like one of the hot spots in Silver Hollow is like almost like overwhelming here. And, but at the same time, this smell hits your nose. And you've smelt this before and your, your stomach drops a little bit. It's that smell of ichor. And... And Carl smell it? Can you? I don't know. Can Carl smell? He doesn't to make my pancakes smell bad, so that he could. Maybe you can sense smell. Maybe. I mean, smell is a sense. I'll say that because of your. <laughs> I'll I'll make I'll make I'll make a decision. I'll I'll say that you probably can't smell, but what what she what she smells, you almost feel. So she feels the positive energy, but she smells that ichor of, of, of corruption that she smelled before. You feel it as if it's kind of pulling at you a little bit. Mm, it feels stinky here. It does feel stinky. It, it feels like you need to take a shower. <laughs> Didn't work before. Maybe steam? Try steam next time. Who knows? Those are dry cleaners. Reese uh, will, I guess, sort of call a halt to the party. She's never really done that before, so she does it like kind of in a hesitant, almost pan does it way like, hang on everyone. No, don't, don't do the voice, don't do the voice. Um, uh, <clears throat> so uh, there's, um, yeah, there's something feels and smells icky around here. Oh. Oh, and also, since I forgot to ma ma describe it, she's also now wearing a raincoat that is like, comes up to here on her arms and here and probably up around her like waist 
um, and it looks very uncomfortable and tight, um, but she just not gonna say anything about it. Yeah, um, I get this. I am, I don't know if I mentioned, I'm a werewolf, you know, light of the moon stuff. So I get this like scent. I have a smell right now of something icky, but I also have this warm feeling of something good. So I suspect we're getting closer to the moon kiss sword. And I suspect we're also getting closer to something dangerous. Do I feel anything along the lines of closeness to- Yes. You too feel that that warmth and that energy that had come to you a, a few years ago um, as, and this is kind of new for you. You were you were out in a in a field. It wasn't necessarily a holy site when the moon kind of came to you. Now you feel this kind of this closeness to her, and it, it emboldens you a little bit. I feel it as well. Uh, looks like, and then just it kind of dawns on her. I suppose there's a ghost. I mean, I. <laughs> Werewolves. I, eh. <laughs> <laughs> if there's ghosts, there's werewolves. Offended, like, what did I do? You, you existed. <laughs> you didn't do anything. <laughs> you existed and then existed. I'm just very new to this stuff, and it is definitely uh, out of my wheelhouse. But um, I'm. Uh, I feel it too, and I feel it's calling. Mm -hmm. Call... You said that it smelled bad, right? Yeah, it smells like rotting, deathy, nasty stuff. Yeah. It smells kind of like those pancakes I made in the morning. It feels kind of like those pancakes. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Carl. When you've been through here before, have you ever seen, like, monsters of some kind? Have ever seen monsters of some kind? I would say that you haven't necessarily seen monsters. You've seen beings drawn to it that are, like, drawn to the, the power of that, maybe more aminals. aminals. Well, I'm doing not, great. I need more coffee. Not uh, monsters, but but not monsters. Really big animals sometimes, like mountain lions, and bears. And <laughs> lions, tigers, and bears. Like things Goodbye. that could be corrupted. Everything can be corrupted, but that is true. I mean, there was a really wicked escaped pet ferret once that I saw up here, and that. Mm. What do you think? Smell it. What do you think, Nova? Uh, yeah, um, Nova is still very much in their very unappropriate, like, goth outfit. They have been struggling behind you guys, like... Oh, the Doc Martens were a bad choice. <laughs> and yeah. then you mentioned something creepy, they're like, I'm just gonna, you know, um, they pull out a, a hunting rifle that they have, and they're like, yeah, um... I'm down for shooting things, but let's try and keep it away from us. This thing doesn't work great at close range. Oh, uh, I got you on the close range. Don't worry. It's awesome yeah. actually having people with ranged attacks right now. Cause yeah, yeah, this this isn't great. And she like kind of apparates the the bow into her hands. This isn't super great for close range. I mean, it could be, but mm. stab them in the eye with an arrow if th these things just will they have eyes bears have eyes and mountain lions but mm -hmm. what if it's not a bear or a mountain lion wait guys wait, there's bears and mountain lions here yeah but don't worry i i i think i do do you want to see something kind of cool i do like seeing always cool um, oh, oh okay just stand stand back a little 
and Reese will just like start like shaking her head really frantically like this. <laughs> And then like all of that hair and like her body just seems to like widen out until she's this like massive six feet by six feet ball of a werewolf, like literally a sphere of a werewolf. Uh, and she's got like gray spots and like black fur and she's just like going crazy. She's like, <laughs> it's basically Reese on coffee, but now is a werewolf. Uh, and she's just <laughs> oh. oh, is. But also looks like she could very easily rip you to pieces. You know, I didn't know it would be that cute. It's disarming almost. Oh, yep, okay. Oh, Reese, can I pet you, please? Oh, man. I, I will say I, I, Nova, I, Nova I, would reach up to pet Reese behind the ear and like give her give Yeah, her Je- Jennifer would again. as well. She would just oh. give her a little scratch, just like, oh. For those of you tuning in, we're petting. <laughs> Um, as soon as those hands come toward her, Reese just gets so excited and she'll like duck under the hand and like scoop them onto her back. Uh, okay. Both of them, just one and then the other and then they're like, I don't care what state they're in on my back and I'll just like go and I'll chomp Carl in half, but it doesn't matter because Carl's a ghost. And then I'll just really? take off towards the smell of the death. <laughs> Carl. All, all of them? All of them on your back? And we're taking off. Okay. And Carl, I think Carl is in my mouth, but obviously Carl is a ghost, so Carl is not in my mouth. I just ran through Carl. I think Carl can decide whether to go with your mouth or to pass through you. <laughs> Carl just accepts being, like, bitten glomped and just goes along with the ride. <laughs> I would have been, like, rude. Um, he's okay. just like, alright, this is my Carl. life now. Ghosts, man, they go right through you. <laughs> Your life now. It's like sugar-free gummy bears. <laughs> um, so you all uh, take off on um, a little bit taken aback by the 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 speed and um, strength of this, for lack of a term, teen that you met not but a day ago, and. Um, <laughs> And you, you, you go probably another uh, 50 yards uh, forward. That, that smell now in your wolf form is even, is, even, uh, is even stronger and more pungent. And you start to slow a little bit as it gets really overwhelming. So you reach kind of like a clearing. And in the distance, you can see that um, that brighter colored rock almost gleaming in the sun that that Carl had uh, had described to you and kind of like a shimmer especially in your in your woven form and I'll say that um, Jennifer and Carl Jennifer being close to the the moon goddess and Carl being between this world and another can see that sheen as well um, on the far side as um, in front of it, not necessarily patrolling, but uh, one patrolling is a indeed a mountain lion because that's been on my mind all day. Um, obviously taken over with what Reese has come into contact with before, especially in the Everglades, is that corruption that has caused that mountain lion to almost swell in size and where normally there would be maybe a little bit of saliva or drool uh, seeping from its chin you see this black ichor from its chin and from its nostrils and almost from its eyes as its eyes that used to be filled with life are now blackened and sunken as it just stalks back and forth in front and behind it you see two vultures as well kind of perched uh, keeping an eye out um, themselves also being filled with that same corruption, uh, their wings and their bodies almost looked like they had been stripped and then tarred and feathered as their, their black body with their feathers melt, um, almost and their eyes have that very animalistic and hollow, uh, stare as it scans and behind them, what you don't understand what you're seeing at first are just kind of like smaller critters that have been taken over and they each are trying to get through what you see the sheen and with each one it kind of um catches that 
that holy, that that kind of sacred, um, and it and it uh, and it burns them a little bit. But with each one, it gets a little bit closer, almost as if it, by sheer sheer will of corruption, is is doing what happened in Silver Hollow, trying to get through this sacred barrier by the sacrifices of themselves. Um. And you get the sense that you are at the location you want to be at, and you are not the only thing that is after this weapon. So they're, just to confirm, all of them are trying to get it, not just the smaller critters, right? But like the vulture and the mountain lion. Yeah, the vultures right now are trying to keep a lookout, as is the mountain lion. They're kind of patrolling, while the the smaller ones, like we'll say like raccoons and... Um, I wouldn't say as small as like squirrels, but kind of like the smaller, smaller beings are trying to uh, get through uh, this barrier and they're trying to get there to um, break this barrier of some sort. Mm -hmm. I'll stop like a good distance away um, to where I assume that they can't see or hear me, us. And I'll just like sit down so people can slide off my back and you can't talk in my werewolf form, but you just see my tail like wagging back and forth. And she's mm -hmm. just like on her haunch, just, just very gently like. <sighs> my, you know, my low growl is off today, but you know, you get the idea. Gotcha. Um, with that kind of low growl, the mountain lion kind of oh, locks eyes. Damn sneaky cat damn sneaky cats uh, lock eyes with you um, and you get the the sense that the the game is on as it starts to stalk towards you. I stalk towards it. Okay, Reese <laughs> what are you doing? Um, well, you know, cats and dogs, like, she rolled up and she was all ready to be like, okay Pan would go into this very cautiously Pan would, you know, stay back and work out a plan and do this and that but then that cat started coming towards her and she is ready to play. So she is just going to jump on over and try and pounce on the cat and do like a double claw, like smush. Okay, we will say at this point, you're all are entering into combat. The wonderful thing about Monster of the Week and the thing that really annoys me sometimes, there is no initiative. We all just try to figure out how we're going to do this. Uh, so Reese is going first, attacking the mountain lion, um, while you three can try to figure out what you would also like to do to either um, subdue the situation, get past the barrier, whatever you want to do, figure it out. Reese, roll to kick some ass. Yes. Um, nice. That is going to be an 11. 11. All right. That is a mucho success. I love mucho. Um, so you get to decide from one of these things. Uh, you get to add an extra harm. You get to move them into um, a specific area that you want them to be. Uh, you can take less harm or you can give another hunter or ally um, a plus one moving forward. I can't believe I remembered all of that. Good job. Thanks. It's Such like a actually, great GM. It's like I'm trying to like actually I'm figuring it out. You are a great GM, Alice. Uh, oh, Kai, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I go <laughs> by both. The brain, apparently. Um, yeah. So I am going to. Um, do I get one of those or two of those? Was it a critical you? Success? You get one of the, you get to okay. choose from one of those because okay, you've okay, succeeded. Yeah. You get to choose from one of those. Great. If you'd gotten a nine or or seven to nine, you wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to choose. I will. I would like to move them. Ooh. I think I've identified the mountain lion as like the biggest threat to my uh, non werewolf friends. Although sure. I don't know what threatens Carl. I'm just going to let Carl do his own thing. So I'm just going to try and corral the mountain lion like over to the side away okay. from my friends. And, All right. Yeah. Kick up a fuss. All right. And you, um, you are, are you using your claws or your bite? Claws. Class. And that is a two harm, correct? Mm -hmm. two, two harm, close messy. Um, all right. As yeah, let's yeah, that's fine. As uh, for a little seasoning on it, being in this sacred place that is it's almost powering you, 
and going into this, your your damage towards this mountain lion is almost matching. It's 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 doing more damage than you're used to in your claws, as you you and your damn eyebrow, as you are emboldened by by the moon goddess and you you bypass its armor almost. Can, so essentially, you bypass its armor. Cool. Can 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 because we're in the moon glade and stuff, and because I'm yeah. on a huge Sailor Moon kick recently. Can my fur become like this iridescent, like purple pink as I step into this glade? Absolutely. Yes. You become, um, <laughs> ting! <laughs> <laughs> as you do you, uh, attack this mountain lion, dealing it to harm. Um, but of course, because of the amazing close combat, it deals you to harm. Um, which I believe you get one of those. Mm-hmm. All right, how many? There it is. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, and that uh, finishes Reese's turn. You all watched as this giant six foot by six foot cube of a werewolf jumped into this glaive, turning very iridescent in her magical girl self, and tackles this mountain lion and kind of moves it away from you all. But the vultures are have their eyes on you, and one takes off while the other one stays and starts <laughs> towards you both, uh, towards the, the three. Who would like to go next? I can. Yeah. Okay, Jennifer, what are you doing? I, uh, taking out the bow and just like seeing one of those vultures coming towards us, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and your bow, I believe, also rolls with your kick some ass? Yes. Okay, why don't you go ahead and roll 2d6, add your tuff, and tell me what that number is. <sighs> Five and five plus two, so. Ooh, look at you, badass. All right, you two also get to choose from this. You either get to deal an extra harm, you can give another ally a plus one on their next roll, you can take one less harm, or you position the uh, enemy where you want them. Um, I'm going to give, uh, just, I, I'm gonna like, Almost like kind of just like ah no I get it <laughs> just shoot the shoot, the, uh, shoot this glowing arrow out that kind of just seems to like glow as it passes through um, and almost guiding bolt esque illuminates the the thing um, the this vulture giving a plus one to Nova perfect all right and how much a harm does your bow do does it say three uh, well it, I was going off of the 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 standard like divine stuff and all that does three damage okay. and it's all holy so you got it you um you dish out a hefty blow as this arrow kind of pierces right toward through its shoulder and it drops a little bit uh very pissed however it does get you uh with its claws um and deals you uh two harm i don't know if you naturally have an armor if you do i do i have one armor naturally. then it gets knocked down to one harm all right we have nova and carl frank who is going next carl frank <laughs> <laughs> um nova will accidentally drop her rifle okay but look to the vulture that mm-hmm. um, attacked Jennifer and is like, um, no. And they're gonna hex it. Hex. Hex. <laughs> All right, hex bud. That. I believe that is roll your weird. Yep. And that'll be plus three for the plus one forward. Yes, it is. Yes! Twelve. <laughs> Jesus, listen, l- y'all, we still have an hour left in the show. You cannot. <laughs> I will add more vultures. I'm not above it. Um, no. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Come at me. Um, uh, and what are you doing with your hex? Uh, the target immediately suffers harm. Okay. So it's two harm, magic, and ignores armor. Okay. Um, I'm... <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to see if I was going to give you any extra ones. I'm not. Okay. Um, all right, so you uh, reaching out with your your essence, your spooky ass essence, 
and seeing your friend getting clawed, you, uh, what does it look like when you hex this vulture? Um, it's like a wave of black necrotic lightning mm -hmm. darts from Nova and it pierces the vulture like at the same point that the arrow did. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the um, the injury from the arrow just flashes black and like spreads for like a split second and then the magic kind of vanishes, but the bird got hurt. Absolutely. And the bird did get considerably hurt as it drops now down to its its feet, um, not able to use one wing, but still still going, still moving. Um, as it goes towards you and kind of um, uh, takes its beak and <laughs> and pokes you with it. And vultures have like really, you know, strong beaks. They tear apart flesh and all that wonderful things. And uh, you suffer one harm. The beak gives Rude. one harm. Root, very much so. Um, but uh, so we still have we have one vulture barely hanging on, one vulture that now is seeing that its compatriot is going to need assistance, and it's also going to take flight um, and start heading towards you. We have Reese in a battle with the mountain lion. Carl, what are you doing? So Carl looks at the two that have been pinging the vultures and looks at the mountain lion and is like, yeah, just keep that up. Just uh, cover me. And he's going to walk up to the barrier and attempt to do uh, magical force damage on it. Ooh. Magical force damage on the barrier? Mm hmm Okay. So that's 2d6 plus weird, is it? I believe so, yes. Okay. So that's a nine? That's a nine. Uh, what does it say on your... And it ignores uh, armor... If it Correct. has that, it was the extra I picked. I wanted to wait until after you did it. I'm like, so you're going to try and take down the only thing that's keeping out these corrupted little things? Yeah. <laughs> we have to get there too. I mean, yep, you sure. seem to be dispatching of all of those pretty handily. I think this is going to take a while to take down. Mm -hmm. um, so what are, what move did you just use? Um, magical force. Magical force. I feel like this is one of those moments where, like, the rogue picks the lock before checking if the door is unlocked, but it's no, so good. in line with Carl that I love it. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Let's see if I can just take care of this real fast. <laughs> All right, I don't see magical force, and it's fine. Um, how much damage does that? Deal? It is one harm magical force. Okay. Uh, so you go up to the barrier wanting to pass through it so that everybody else could get through it, hoping to maybe get the sword and get the hell out of dodge. And as you do, you reach forward and it, the whole thing kind of vibrates and it blows you back. And we'll say that you take one damage. Mm -hmm. um, but what you did do is a, a couple of the, the corrupted creatures um, that have long since been dead and reanimated um, are blown back as well kind of um, easing their assault on it for at least the time being as kind of what happened was a thunder wave uh, happened a little bit so a little bit of good a little bit of bad can Carl get hurt is that a thing do you have harm um, I do have harm, but I also have unquenchable vitality because that just seems like something Carl would hate to have. So mm -hmm. when I get hurt, I can roll to heal, essentially. Oh god, it's like me when I made Lily's character and somehow just made them unstoppable. <laughs> All right, um, good job, Carl. Um, Reese, we are back to you. What are you doing with this mountain lion? Oh, you know playing a little cat and dog trying having to... a little wrestle yeah just like batting back and forth uh, i do notice the magical explosion behind me mm -hmm. and would you know i feel like just going by reese instincts like carl's been with me since yesterday and we had such good talks <laughs> about friendship and life and i really feel like carl was a big source of wisdom uh in her life so she's probably gonna like you know, ditch the mountain lion and just move into uh, try and protect Carl. <laughs> protect Carl for the barrier that he blew yep. up. 
I didn't know what happened. All I saw was the explosion. I'm just going by, you know, my wolfy instincts here. So, you know, also Carl, who probably doesn't want to be protected and is tired of being a ghost. But this is this is how Reese do. So okay. she'll like roll over. I, I, I picture her rolling literally over the mountain lion. Like it's kind of like a steam roll. And mm -hmm. then we'll like jump up and try and like tackle Carl out of the way with her mouth, but just jumps through Carl. Yep. Yep. But I will protect Carl next time. I don't have to roll it, so and next time Carl's about to get hurt, I'll uh, I'll protect him. Okay, so right now you are taking a, a protective stance in front of Carl, uh, choosing to not deal any further damage to the mountain lion at this time. Mm -hmm. And then as she, you know, hovers in front of Carl, there's a split second where she's like, oh my god, but my physical friends are now exposed to danger. <laughs> Friends are uh, so having more than one friend is so hard. I know <laughs> this is hassle. why I didn't want it. <laughs> you have to pick your favorite one, and who's gonna die? Oh. Who's not gonna die? <gasps> oh god! <laughs> it's like MySpace top five friends all over again. No, why would you remind me of that? Eh? <laughs> because I'm thirty, and everybody else needs to be as old as I am. <laughs> Fun fact: My first job ever was making custom MySpace uh, profiles. Yep. <laughs> Oh. All right, Jennifer, you um, royally hurt this uh, this vulture that is now in your space with another one flying at you to avenge it, even though it's not dead yet. What are you doing? Um, hmm. Let's see. So there's one like trying to peck at my head, right? Mm -hmm. And it's big. It's a big one. It's a it's a big one. It's like you know how vultures are already like uncomfortably large. Yeah, they're huge. It's scary. Yeah, double that. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Diet turkeys. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so there's one there and there's one incoming. Sure is. Okay, so Jennifer's just kind of like she's got her bow in her hand. She's like, ah, stop! And she kind of she's gonna go and smack it out of the out of the sky and use mm -hmm. smite. Ooh, okay. So I just smack it, which is an unarmed attack that does two harm, intimate, hand messy. Does it say you don't have to roll for it? Uh, it does not. It's just an unarmed attack, so I probably do have to roll for it. You do. Roll, kick some ass. All right. I think what you meant to say was you were going to smite it out of the sky with a smack. <laughs> yeah, I, I smite it out of the sky with a smack, and that's a nine. Yes. A nine. All right. So you do uh, two harm uh, to that vulture, um, and it it glows ever so much. You see, kind of when your your fist kind of comes in contact with it, that divine en energy uh, swirling with that corrupted energy is it almost burns a little bit, and it it screeches. <laughs> as it swoops down and tries to clap, uh, clasp clasp you with its uh with its talons and lift you up um make just a straight tough roll so okay. i want you to roll 2d6 and add your tough okay 11 11 perfect so as it tries to lift you off the ground to try and take you up to a height to then drop you you are able to kind of pull down with your body uh, being, you know, very deceptively strong, pulling it down with you, but it is going to still do two harm as its talents do dig into your skin, uh, which I believe is reduced to one again for you. Yep. Um, Nova, it is your turn. What are you up to? There is a vulture Ooh. on your friend and there is a vulture that is pecking you. And there's a mountain lion that... And there is a mountain lion that is currently turning to follow Reese, though she was very apt to run away. It's still, like, very much, you know, I want to bite, I want to fight the biggest fucker in here, and Reese is the biggest person. Okay. Uh, Nova swears a lot. That's fine, so do I. <laughs> ignores the vultures and runs after the lion and does, a uh, like, pulls out her big knife and using her magic basically imbues the knife with her spooky energy. 
to All right. stab at the mountain lion to stop it from going for Reese. Okay. So that's the big whammy, I think. Big whammy, yes. This is the <laughs> new move. Uh, nobody has chosen the big whammy yet. I was pretty stoked to see you choose it. <laughs> because it's I, exciting. You can use your powers to kick some ass. Roll plus weird instead of tough. Yep. And if you succeed, it has a two harm close obvious ignore armor. So you're going to ignore whatever the mountain lion's no armor is. On a miss, though, it's going to hurt you instead. <laughs> yup. Don't do that. Big whammy, no money, indeed. <laughs> Big whammy, no money. <laughs> Please say a nine's a success. A nine is a success. Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so a seven to nine is a mixed success. A 10 plus is a crazy success. So you get to choose extra things too. And then a one to six is a failure. So you did succeed. Um, <laughs> and you deal out uh, two harm uh, to this to this mountain lion who turns uh, to uh, kind of bat you away, uh, dealing you two harm. Okay, yep. Yep, that's not fun. Sure isn't. Uh, but that's the that's the that's the wonderful thing about Monster of the Week, folks. You gotta find ways to hit it from afar because if you don't, they're gonna hit you. Uh, but good job. Uh, it's uh, yeah. kind of hurt. It's kind of hurt. It's a mountain lion. It's a corrupted mountain lion. It's big as shit. Uh, Carl, what are you up to, buddy? Carl. Carl. So <laughs> Carl is um has seen this uh, teenage werewolf leap to his aid and looks over and you said that you kind of rolled through Carl and are kind of circling back around, which means that at least part of Carl is now exposed to this mountain lion and <laughs> kind of looks at Reese and looks at the barrier and looks at this mountain lion and the barrier like is still unfazed. It's still right? very much there. there. Your one harm is not going to do anything to a, a mystical <laughs> deity in place barrier. <laughs> <laughs> he he sighs again, real heavy, taking that optional breath. And um, can can he reach the mountain lion with um, the close range, or would he have to move up? How far away is it? I we, there's no like you have a max amount of movement. This is just what you do in your turn if you wish to get close to it. I'll say that. Um, Reese kind of rolled past you in the fact that your body did not stop her. <laughs> and um, the mountain lion is moved away. So we'll say it's like about five feet away from you. It's still pretty close. You can get okay. to it. All right. Um, so Carl will square up with it and try to zap it with magic. <laughs> <laughs> zap it. He's, He's like just literally going to like shuffle his feet. Like you do on carpet and then like nah, 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 nah. <laughs> he like raises the brass knuckles and it's just like magic all right roll whatever you need to roll to do that okay oh wait plus three is gonna be an eight eight poof you came close you came close Thank and how I'm much so weird how much damage do your brass knuckles make uh just the one just one oh but does it ignore does it ignore armor? Uh, well, I was wanting to do the the magic one, and that one, yeah, the zap uh, ignores armor. Okay, well then you do one harm as you where where are you, what does this look like? Are you punching it square in the nose? So he like squares up with his knuckles and then just like <laughs> like casts spooky magic at it. Like, oh yeah, I'm totally gonna defend this teenage girl. Yep, and boops it. Sure does. Boops the snoot. Um, <laughs> uh, dealing it one harm will say that it, it kind of gets its own little ick or nose bleed. Um, and y do you ever have like a, a, a dog that you kind of have to boop it on the nose to get it to not eat your food? And it kind of looks at you like super offended. Mm -hmm. That's what this mountain lion <laughs> looks like for a second as it, this corrupted being just is like really taking a back pet. It got hurt by a boop. <laughs> Um, I feel like if you're yeah. cool with it, Kaya, my turn, I'm hoping can like kind of overlap that. So I see all of this happen. I was like circling in to protect Carl and then Carl circled around to protect me. And so I need to come up and protect Carl. And so 
now I like, I see Carl go forward and like boop the nose, but like simultaneously as Carl's moving forward, I feel like Reese is like moving towards him and wants mm -hmm. to like jump through Carl and bite the snout. So hopefully the bite happens like right after the boop. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah. yeah, no, I, 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 I really, I really like this. Yeah. I really like this. Sweet. I am going to kick some ass and bite some boops. I wow, you said that boops is and I was like, what? I mean, you know, you know, later. hey, never really talked about what Reese was into um, other than Diner Boys, but I rolled a 12. Jesus. Technically, actually, I rolled a 13 because I, I rolled an 11 and then I get my plus one for tough and then I get a plus one for my fervor or no, because I got hurt or whatever. So, yeah, I roll a 13. OK, 13. Can um, I bite its entire face? Can I fit its entire head just like uh, in my ah. uh or most of the face? I think maybe most of it. It's it's a swelled mountain lion. So maybe mm -hmm. like a normal mountain lion you could fit in your face. Um, this mountain lion, swole. Swole mountain lion. <laughs> swole with all the bad things in the world. Um and you deal is your bite three harm? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. Um it's it's still up. Uh, as you uh, bite through Carl, it's like really cool, like almost like a vendor's appears out of the mist and punches you in the face, kind of cool. Um, as you as you bite down on this mountain lion, um, it does uh, bit its face. I'm not gonna make it bite you, so it does claw up at you for for two harm, reduced to you for one, but you deal three harm on this corrupted thing that um, kind of spins around, face bleeding, this the the black ichor and ooze. Um, what am I? Oof. It's looking it's looking looking hurt. Um, Jennifer, you have a vulture with its claws in you. That you dealt uh, two harm to, correct? Mm hmm. I um, if this is the same one, I also shot it with an arrow as well. Well, you shot the first one with an arrow. Oh, is this a different one? Wow. Yeah, this is the second one. God, I got yeah. it. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Well, I mean, I can't really fire my bow if there's a bird in my arm. <laughs> so she's just gonna. You're gonna try and hit it again? Yeah, it's a, get off me. You got it. Go for, uh, go ahead and roll, kick some ass. Yeah. All right. Uh, if the, uh, yeah, that's a, uh, a 10. A 10? Jesus, you guys are killing me. Yeah. And by killing me, you're killing my peoples. Uh, you reach up and uh, bat it away from you and it, and it kind of, uh, it does drop you. And when it does, it does, carve you a little bit, dealing you another harm. Okay. Um, but you deal uh, two harm to it and it looks pretty pretty tough as it, it lets go of you and kind of circles to try and get into another uh, swooped position uh, to, to try and pick you up. Um, Nova, it is now your turn. The vulture in front of you looks on death's door and then there is one that is circling back around to get at Jennifer. And then there's a mountain lion in the distance, getting the shit kicked out of it by a ghost and a werewolf. <laughs> uh, Nova is going to try and um, big whammy the other vulture with the knife, magical knife thing again. Okay. Hopefully. The the one that's not in front of you. Uh, the one that's on death's door. Oh, the one in front of you. Perfect. Yeah, okay. Go, go ahead and roll your, your weird. Oh, please. That's what I do in public on the regular. I roll for weird. <laughs> that's a natural fail for me anyway. Oh, yay, yeah, it succeeded. What'd you roll? 11. Oh. I'm gonna start kidding. I have eight disadvantages that I'm gonna start using on y'all. Because <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay. So on an 11, you either deal and wait. Yeah, you either deal an extra harm, you move it where you want it, you take one less harm, or uh, you 
uh, give another ally a plus one forward. Um, and I forgot to do that for you, Jennifer, because you rolled a 12, didn't you? So both of you need to figure out what you're doing. I just do an extra harm to the one. Okay. To the one. Okay, got it. Hey, Nova's gonna give a plus one forward to Carl. Okay. Please, right. Carl, kill these things. Uh, Nova, what does it look like when you completely murder this corrupted vulture? Um, Nova would bring the magical blade across its throat, and as she does, she would snap its neck. <laughs> bring it like <laughs> midnight chicken. Yeah. Sorry, that was graphic. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> that's a midnight chicken. Uh, I don't know. I just, that's what I came up with. It wasn't that graphic, Ben. <laughs> I said, ring it, you know, and I'm, oh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> and they just kind of stand there looking not great. Not great? No. <laughs> Are you hurting? <laughs> Very much so. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, <laughs> Uh, Nova victoriously um, both breaks and eviscerates this flying turkey, um, but they themselves are in a bit of a pickle life-wise. Um, Carl Frank, what are you doing? Carl, suddenly feeling inspired by uh, Nova, reaches through Reese to, as Reese sort of chomps around, goes over to do another magical snoot boop. <laughs> if you hear squeaks, I'm so sorry. I also have a dog. <laughs> and that's a uh, plus one on the roll? Yes. Okay, so that's gonna be a 12. <laughs> roll with disadvantage. <laughs> okay. I forget that I have to use these. I'm like, yeah, I gotta slow you down a little bit. Yeah, that's queen. Rolls a 13. Ten. Ah, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I, I quit with the table. That's what happens is I get all the bad in that screen. It is one damage. <laughs> one, oh. one damage. Okay. Uh, to the uh, to the mountain lion? Yeah. Ignoring armor. Yeah. How do you want to kill this mountain lion? So, Reese is doing this really intense face like chewing and the cougar slaps up at Reese and Carl just goes, bad cat and like just points at the paw and the cat just like shrivels. <laughs> you just vicious mockery to cat. Who knocked oh. over my onions? No! <laughs> no! <laughs> bad. <laughs> oh goody, there's still one vulture in play. Excellent, you take down this, uh, this mountain lion. Uh, Jennifer, this uh, this vulture uh, swoops around and um, goes to uh, try and pick you up again. Uh, roll uh, another tough roll. Okay. I just really want to drop somebody today because it was a really cool thing that I've made. <laughs> well, you can't because I rolled an 11. I'll roll at disadvantage if you want. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it kind of goes to swoop in uh, to uh, to get you in it and it misses. Um, but there's still a vulture in play as it kind of circles around all of you, um, seemingly ready to make an another attack. Uh, I do believe that after Carl, it's Reese's turn. What are you doing with this flying turkey? So she just has like a, you know, a dead shriveled mountain lion in her jaws and she'll just do that dog vomit thing where she's just like. Yeah, <laughs> we both do it like. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, you know, kind of like look at Carl and look at the shriveled up thing and just backpedal a few steps away from Carl. Um, and then we'll, you know, Threw the bird up in the air, screech down, and go for a jump and try and bite the bird with okay. my mouth. Okay, you roll to kick some ass to see if you can catch this bird. Come on, roll bad for Kaya, please, guys. <laughs> if you don't, it's fine. It's a 10. <laughs> Shit, okay. I just have a plus two, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, I'm not even going to make you roll because this thing literally had one harm left, one hit point left. What does it look like when you jump and, like, skeet shooting just hit this vulture 
I just catch it in my jaws. And then I like, as I'm landing, you can see like my giant jaw just like, I'm chewing on it, but then I hit the ground and you know, I kind of like fluffy sit back a little bit and look expectantly at all the people and I just go again and spit out the vulture because they are gross. Excellent. Um, with the death of its final protector, um, the the smaller uh, uh, corrupted possessed critters uh, start to scatter um, at the you know the idea of there being imminent death and you kind of hear on the winds the voice of just no as they were not able to get their their goal it's fine um and but what stands before you still is is the barrier um and it almost calls to you jennifer i I feel that, and I see Nova, I'm like, well, first things first, Nova, come here. Yeah. <laughs> first and, things first, I'm the realist. <laughs> and then I just like, are you all right, dear? And my hand kind of starts glowing that same shimmery moonlight, <laughs> and I'm going to lay on hands. Okay, roll to lay on hands. This could be bad for you if you don't get above a 10. Well, let's hope I do. Okay. Uh, sorry, give me a second, I just want to make sure. Ah, uh, cool. Gotcha. Uh, well, I mean, I rolled a nine, but I have plus one. Ah, so I got a ten. Yes. Because I was like, if you roll a nine, it succeeds, but you get that thing and you become incapacitated. Oh no. <laughs> That's the wonderful thing about lay on hands is that if it, it will work, but if it's a seven to nine, you get the damage. So, At what cost? At what, At what cost? cost? Yeah, so, you, so heal two harm. Oh, thank Yay. All right, so Jennifer using her uh, her connection to a deity that has chosen her uh, filters that divine energy through you and you feel the, the warmth as the, the wounds start to close. Um, and Jennifer, through just sheer fucking luck, uh, remains at whatever harm level they are at. <laughs> Three, Not which is deal. it's it's fine. Right. Four is, I'm, I'm riding the line. Yeah, we're riding the line. Um, and what do you all do next? I want to try and chomp the barrier. <laughs> do we, okay, do we, we want this barrier gone. Um, I think I might be able to help here. I, it feels like it's. I know it's going to sound weird. I think it's calling to me. Carl's just chucking the vultures and watching them. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very funny. It's like like uh, like like the one dude just tossing rocks at a like in Hunger Games. It's like boom. Except for it's a, a lifeless, broken necked vulture. Uh, well, Reese, you go and chew one. on it. It doesn't hurt you. You're not really able to pass through it. Um. At I first. just want the image of Reese just like, there's this like magical shimmery <laughs> barrier and just like her giant jaws like. Your tongue goes a little numb. Uh huh. And then I hear Jennifer be like, it's calling to me. And she'll be like, huh? Huh? <laughs> uh huh. I put something. <laughs> you look like Jar Jar Binks now after he got his tongue oh, stuck in the, uh, in the beam. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to do. Thank yep. you. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I would. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, a wood. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm fine. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, go ahead. I will, <laughs> um, I will just kind of step up to the barrier and barrier and um, place a hand on it. Just like, please allow me and my friends to pass. For a moment, you wonder if it's going to work, but that... That same kind of energy, that same kind of warmth fills your hand. As it, it doesn't feel as though it's it's hurting you. And ever so slowly, your hand passes through. And in your mind, it says, you and your chosen may pass. All right, um, we can go in. You pass through, and it almost feels like... It's not like you're just passing through air. It... 
it feels like something has passed through you. And Carl, it actually feels kind of nice. Which is a bit of a change, considering you haven't felt anything in years. It's weird. It tickles. It tickles ever so slightly, and you go, hmm, I don't know. Um, but you are all able to pass uh, slowly through this barrier, and beyond it, it doesn't look like what it did on the outside. On the outside, it looked like it was more rocks. It looked... Um, it it matched the, the the facade of what this mountain was. But in here, it's not cold. It's actually quite warm. It's pleasant. Um, it's bright. And there's not really any type of nature to be found. It's just almost like its own room of just warmth and glow. And in the center hovers, because I'm a huge fan, uh, like a sword that kind of looks like She-Ra's sword. By the power of Grayskull! All right. Um, that kind of, but like real world where it's it's just like, there's you, the closer you look at it, you see it's gleaming silver uh, blade and you see at the hilt, this gold filigree that almost just if it wasn't for the light in the room, you knew it would glow on its own. Um, that has just been meticulously crafted. And in the center is a very deep purple amethyst jewel that just gleams uh, this beautiful purple every once in a while as the kind of light passes through it. Almost like a, like a, like a like light through a prism, except for all the colors, this is purple. Yes, Reese. Is this the same, does it look like the same kind of stone that me and Pan got from the cave to, and gave to Almanana the big chunk of crystal? Um, this same? one uh, doesn't look exactly like that. It's missing that, that very um, distinct silver vein. Mm -hmm. This one is just a deep purple moon mm -hmm. amethyst. Mm -hmm. Cool. Reese will shift back into her human form and just kind of stand there. Um, I know I just met all of you, uh, but thank you for helping me. And because you helped me and we went through this together, I don't feel quite comfortable sharing this, but I think Pan would want me to. Um, I don't feel worthy to uh, take that. I'm I'm just a I'm, I'm just a kid, you know. It should be it should be Pan here or or Jay or or Aminata or something, you know. Like I'm I'm Reese. Well, Reese. They aren't here. You are. And we are here to help you. So so, so maybe one of you should, should, should take it then. But this is your MacGuffin. Oh, that makes sense. And Reese will immediately strive forward. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, she'll stride forward like pretty confidently, but then like when she gets to like right in front of it, she'll like, should be pan. And she'll take off her uh, Anorak rain jacket and wrap it around her hand and use the jacket to grab the sword. The the sword comes away easily. Um, the energy kind of surrounding this area starts to dim a little bit as uh -oh. it's not in like you're gonna be trapped in an old okay. mansion just kind of a you know it was made to house this sword mm. and it no longer has that and so it, it's not keeping that up as much anymore but you have it in your possession wrapped nicely in 
Was it a yellow anorak? Did we just come to I that believe, conclusion? Yeah. yeah. Cause and I needed to make it. Yeah. I needed to make an it reference and it had to yeah. be a yellow. Yes, you said yeah. that. Sure did. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so you, you had the sword, the sword itself. Um, it's not a long sword. It's not like, like Aragorn sword. I would say mm. that it's, it's a short sword. <laughs> We're all D and D players. A it's a short sword. sword. It's a short sword. I would say that it's a little. Can I say a halfway between a short sword and a long sword? A half blade. Yeah. A half blade. Is that a yeah. thing? I'm, I'm pretty sure I've heard that phrase before. That, I don't know if it was sounds from a... better than three quarters blade. Shot sword. <laughs> <laughs> Go call that. Sword. The totally average and not weirdly sized sword. <laughs> it is. It is almost like it's like nicely able to be wielded. You know, like it. Mm -hmm. It feels comfortable. It's a comfortable mm -hmm. blade. Mm -hmm. Like samurai sword length, I feel mm -hmm. is like mm -hmm. yeah. Anyways, and you have that in your possession possession. Um and you is there anything else you wanted to do in this space? Um there, sorry, go ahead. No, you go. Are there the moon rocks that we were talking about? Like, are they on the ground here in this area? They're not on the ground here. Here it almost feels like Kind of like what you would stereotypically think would be heaven, which is just clean walls and clean, clear floor. Um, but there, there are there were some outside that you could you could easily pocket. Can you pocket things? <laughs> I don't know. Could I like partially like phase out a pocket and make it corporeal underneath like a I would I would say that as soon as you start to think about wanting a moon rock for your service one appears dangling around your neck incorporeal <laughs> and shiny just like you are as if a thank you from a far off entity because I'm a warm and fuzzy kind of person <laughs> Carl kind of jumps and he looks to see if anyone else has noticed and then very quickly and furtively reaches outside of the barrier to pick up three other moon rocks <laughs> and walks over to hand them to the other people oh. see now we can all take something so you're not the only one that took something Reese. we're all worthy they're friendship then, stones friendship stones i love it <laughs> And Jennifer, in your in your mind, you hear a very like a very uh, soft. Words are hard for me today. I don't understand. Usually, I'm very loquacious, but today it's just bad. Don't don't worry, it's fine. Yeah, you feel a, a warm and comforting voice that just kind of reaches through and just says, "Well done." Uh, th thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, I don't suppose this can go on the blog, can it? Talking to you the might, boys. You just hear a chuckle that just goes, use a pseudonym. We might need to change your blog a bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, just, well, just a bit. The in between. <laughs> this is a dream that I had. Um, and is there anything else you wanted to do in this place? Uh, Pink. Go ahead, Nova. Um, Nova would look increasingly more uncomfortable because this area is so like light and nice and there sure like... is. Mm. I wouldn't say um, that it burns, but it kind of feels like that one shirt that has a tag that's right here. Oh no. That just really annoys you and it doesn't even matter if you cut it out, it still annoys you. That's okay, what it feels the like. metaphors you make, I just <laughs> feel <is> them. <laughs> um, I'm, that's I'm because wait. I'm very textile oriented. I'm like, oh. I'm gonna Sorry. wait outside, guys. So that don't belong in this. This. I. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just before leaving the space. I'm gonna. Um, before I go. Um, and thank you for helping in the ways you did. Help me help Nova. I feel like they're dealing with something, even if they want to believe they're you know leaning into it leaning into their role sometimes just knowing there's another person walking by your side that actually loves and cares for you does more wonders 
than you can ever imagine. Just keep doing that. Right, I will. Thank you. And she'll kind of just dance the bow away. Um, if me and Carl are left in the cave, you mm-hmm. still in the cave, Carl. Reese will like in your pocket you, dimension. Yeah, Reese will like absorb what she probably heard Jennifer whisper, or mumble, uh, and be like, "Yeah, having always someone to walk beside you, that'd be nice." And then I like look at Carl beside me, and I'm like, "Carl." Yeah. You're all right. You too. And he, like, pat on the shoulder. Um, I don't... <laughs> through the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't... You know, it'd be cool if you were around all the time, but I uh, feel... feel bad. You seem tired. Do you want me to stab you with this magical moon sword that might end it? Because you said, you know, you should kill your friends uh, so they stay with you as ghosts, but you are a ghost, so maybe if I stab you with this, it'll make you my... I, I don't know how this adds up but it just seems, you know, you know I, I pulled the jacket off and it's all like gleaming and magical. I'm like, should I, you know what I mean? Just, you know. Oh my God. <laughs> oh no, I'm right. It. <laughs> Go for it, At what? At least until we're, uh, you know, off the mountain in case somebody falls, I can, you know. What, what, what would you do if somebody falls? I don't know, to rescue them? Maybe. Or well, if there's more cougars. You, gonna... you you just patted your hand through my shoulder. Well, it comes and goes. Oh, okay. Well, I'll if you if you want me to stab you with this when we get out of here, let let me know. I will. It's 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 a good idea. It's probably, you know, do the eternal sleep thing. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm very tired. Yeah. I I would be also. So um, we'll get down the mountain and, you know, maybe we'll have a nice little Group setup. Stabbing. Maybe a if we stab stabbing. you. <laughs> maybe if we stab you. Call. Do we have a while, warning or something? <laughs> this is like the content warning. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we stab you with pancakes, maybe the pancakes will go with you to the afterlife and then you can eat them. Science. Science. Oh my god. What if I go to a bad place in the afterlife? Though? Then uh, at least you'll have pancakes. That's true. Case Not your point. pancakes, though, right? No. That's what hell is, her pancakes. <laughs> 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 you just swim in her pancake batter for the rest of your life. Nope, not my pancakes. Though, that, that's gonna, you know, I mean, you're pretty young. I don't, don't want you to, you know, I can't hang around forever think that you destroyed me or anything like that. Sounds like bad problems. Yeah, that sounds like, you know, young adult therapy time. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, the good yeah. news is that I think that this is, you know, a, a moon-kissed sword um, given by the moon goddess, and, you know, I'll do one of those things where I, like, take off the jacket, and I imagine it does a and then I put the jacket back on and then I take it off and does a and I put it back on I'm like it it seems like something you know that would do good things not bad things so anyways we'll 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 get down the mountain yeah we'll we'll, yeah and I feel like Reese and will like awkwardly emerge from the cave. She doesn't know how to hold a sword. She's never had a, 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 a actual size sword. I forget the name we landed on. <laughs> she's never had a sword of any kind. So she's kind of like. Half sword, I think is what we called it. Yeah, I, I looked it up actually. And a half sword is a fencing term when you're holding a full sword, but you grip it by the blade. 
So it, it's not what Seems I thought. Counterintuitive. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anywho. Ouch. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> That's monster of the week. You deal harm and you get harm. Yeah. Um. So you you uh, head out through your little pocket dimension back into the world. No corrupted creatures in sight. Even the 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 ones that you had uh, dispersed of <laughs> um, are sizzling ever so nicely on these uh, these moonstones as they evaporate into um, into the mid afternoon air. Um, and you you start your descent um, down the mountain. Once you get down uh, closer to uh, the car, your the moonstone that's on uh, that's on you, Carl Frank. Um, it kind of starts to glow and gleam and fill you with a little bit of warmth, as if if you wanted to, you could pass on. Carl is feeling this, and as they're working their way down the mountain, just getting very uncomfortable, like, I have to make sure they get home safe, but also pancakes. And he looks at Reese and says, we need to make pancakes right now. (laughs) She'll, like, her first, she'll just, like, instinctively turn towards the go bag where the instant pancake mix was, and she'll, like, reach in and pull it out, and then be like, Oh, you mean make pancakes? Yep, right now. Oh, oh, okay. Do you need me to with the sword? Uh, no. I think I can if I just. There is pancakes in the cooler. We need yeah, pancakes. Yes. There are pancakes in the cooler, and she has the cooler with her. You took the pancakes with you? Oh, I didn't yeah. want to pack them up because that was pants thing. Anyways, yeah. Do you? Do you... How do we? Why do you? Why do we need to make pan? Why do you need pancakes right now? All right, just uh, pancakes onto the onto the sword, I think, and then I'll focus real hard and you try to get it in me when I'm thinking real hard, and I, and I think it'll work. Okay. You don't, you don't have to be stabbed if you don't want to be. <laughs> oh, like like just throw it with the sword. I guess you could just discus too. For discus. Um, okay. Okay, I was, sure. Um, uh, Reese. I pull off the jacket. Mm-hmm. Reese, Reese, Reese. <laughs> nope, it's you guys do whatever you want to do. I am just here to watch it happen. Can, I think, Jennifer, can you put the pancakes on the sword? Why don't you just give your friend the pancakes? Uh, it's something big, a big, big. The sword, it's a moon kiss sword. <laughs> I, How are the pancakes going to go in the afterlife if we don't stab it with the magical sword? I think it's not this the sword that's going to help him move on. It can't hurt. <laughs> it will hurt. <laughs> Carl, you want to think really hard? Yeah, I feel like this, this thing, and he gestures to this pendant. I feel like if I, if I think about it real hard, and I eat pancakes... I'll be able to sleep. Can would it be okay if if I helped you? Um, I can. I I I have this thing where I can put like thoughts into people's heads. I can get like give you the taste and texture of pancakes of these pancakes that we had earlier, and let you think and like imagine the taste and everything of them That'd to help you. So good. I won't even make you roll for it because that's really cool. <laughs> so Nova's using her life thing too. Yep, I know exactly what you're doing. Um, for the first time, and what seems for the first time in forever, <laughs> um, I you can finally take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what a mood! What a mood! <laughs> you, you smell the scent of what's your favorite pancake? Uh, Carl, is it just buttermilk or man. just just buttermilk with with maple syrup? The freshest maple syrup from Canada, dousing the the hottest, freshest pancakes that are just nicely golden brown, fills your nose, 
and in you can almost feel like it's you can taste it and you can feel the texture in your mouth as they're just fluffy and amazing it brings you such joy that your body kind of almost begins to to glow and to be pulled towards something that feels like rest all right now physical pancakes just throw them in I just like don't even hesitate and grab the pancakes out of Jennifer's hand and I'm gonna like fully like palm smush them into Carl's face like thank you for being my friend goodbye and as you do (laughs) Carl's face feels like a face and for a moment Carl stands before you before a light kind of pulls him up is there anything you'd like to say Carl before you move on to the afterlife Stay in school and, you know, wash your hands and stuff. Oh, no, I literally never go to school. <laughs> I'm always out saving the world. <laughs> and and with that, Carl disappears into a ball of light, heading up towards the moon, leaving you three and a pancake mess by the truck to head back to town with a sword and a mission completed. And I think that's where we're going to end tonight. Wait, because I always jump in right at the end as soon as you say we're going to end tonight. Can, God can, damn it, Reese. What do you want? I just, I want to have a moment mm-hmm. of like, the pancakes are still in my hand, I imagine. Uh, it's, yeah, just, it's a sticky mess. Yeah, and I'll just kind of like let them drop to the ground and wipe my hand on my jeans. Um, and then as we're walking back to the car, I have the sword and I look at Jennifer and Nova get into the car and I look down at the pancake on the ground and I pull out my phone with my non-sticky hand and I'll text Pan words for the first time ever that say, I learned how to make friends. Oh. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and on that note, I'm going to go cry. <laughs> Oh, that was huge. I got goose pimples. You stop it right now, damn it. Um, okay, and that's where we'll end the session. Uh, Pan getting uh, her first all words text. Um, <laughs> a friend finally finding rest. Uh, another one. Oh, boy. <laughs> Nova and Jennifer are going to be hell. I can feel it. Uh, <laughs> heading back to Silver Hollow. Uh, thank you all for stopping by and um, hanging in with us this whole time. Uh, we're going to go around and uh, say where everyone uh, can find you. We'll go backwards this time and we'll start with Holly. Where can we find you? What are you doing? What? Who? What? And Who? tell where? us your favorite part of the game. And tell us your favorite part of the game. Shit. Um, I am Holly. Uh, you can find me at Sagophilia on Twitter. Um... My favorite part of the game, um, probably just how incredibly chill Reese was with just waking up and there's just some random semi-transparent dude wrecking stuff in the room and it's just like, what's up? Yeah, what's just up? Like mood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a mood buddy. And did you say where we can find you? Uh, Twitter, uh, Sageophilia, and I'm here periodically. Um, yeah, finally. Awesome. We'll go to uh, Nova next. I, I'm Almost Amy. You can find me at Almost Amy on Twitch and Almost Amy 96 on Twitter. Uh, my favorite part of the game is genuinely just how chaotic this little group <laughs> have been. It's like the children were released for a night um, <laughs> and Pan's going to have to deal with the aftermath of that. <laughs> That's very much usually how it is. <laughs> uh, excellent. Uh, Jennifer slash Izzy. Hi. Uh, uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter at Dice Crunch. Um, and yeah, um, I don't really stream ever, but um, sometimes I make things that I release on Dice Crunch. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a minute since I have done my last release, but uh Look forward for that. Mostly homebrew stuff for D and D, five B. And what was your favorite part? Oh right, uh, my favorite part. I think. Gosh, I, 
I do. I I think. I I, I really think it was just ever like the reactions, the mixed reactions to Carl being coming <laughs> in, just like, hey, hey, Jennifer's like. <laughs> Awesome. No, but just being like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style, bro. Um, all right, and the ever lovely Lily Sparks, our Reese. Uh, just gotta say in the Zoom chat, um, there was just a message that says, "I am dying for pancakes now," and I think at this point we need a content warning on this game. You will have serious pancake cravings. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's and it. Puns. Pancakes, puns, and riddles. The worst is that sometimes I have such a bad pancakes craving after the game is done, but the game is done at like 8 p.m. So I can't order from anywhere. So I'll order pancakes from McDonald's and it's just like, it doesn't live up to the uh -huh. descriptions you give. Sure doesn't. But um, anyways, where you can find me, I'm Lily Sparks. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter, Lily Sparks with an X. I am uh, at a lot of streams all over the place and excited to be here on Saturday for our DM day over at Stratacus, where we are. So I don't know why I said over at, we are here. Um, gosh. Probably my Zoom chat was the favorite part of this game. Sorry, viewers, but the Zoom chat was lit. It Very really hilarious. was. It was really funny. Uh, <laughs> some uh, some shout outs, Carl. I am literally going to write a TTRPG about you. I hope you're okay with that. Super totally great. great. Um, just want to do a shout out for Jennifer slash Izzy for your first stream ever. And did uh, so good. So good. thank you. Great goddess moments with the bow. Mm -hmm. And Nova was just such a lovely, dark little shadow coming around, stabbing things, shooting things. Just amazing. Uh, if I had to pick one, like, just like shot, just like a little zoom in of a moment, it'll just be the, that paper plate of pancake mush just falling down the wall as Carl pokes his head out and goes, Did they eat the pancakes? <laughs> Um, and I am Kaya Gaston. I have been your alpha for this evening. You could find me on Twitter at Crick Charisma. I pretty much just post about this game and pictures of my dog and weird conversations that my husband and I have that I think are funny, but nobody thinks are funny. Um, uh, my favorite part was uh, how awesome, how well everybody came together. Um, I always say, as always every week, it's just being able to see what you all do with the story. Um, Izzy, you did fantastic, especially for your first stream, um, but you did fantastic by any standards. Uh, I love the dynamic that you brought. Um, Pancake Madness is crazy. Um, but of course, uh, my Lily always gets me in the feels every week with sending that text. I am now dead. Um, <laughs> I don't know if Scrat's going to pop in to talk about the sponsors. I know that there is Mage Hand um, Press. Yeah, you're going to do it. Fantastic job by uh, our <laughs> guest players today. What a wonderful show that was. Thank they you so much, the, everyone. The ether. Here I am. Oh my god. The Fey yes, being. Uh, unfortunately, Alice couldn't do this stream today. She did get a touch of heat stroke uh, and had to take a break. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone, for uh, working together and, and making this happen um, despite, despite Alice be feeling unwell. Uh, and especially thank you to Holly for hopping in at the last minute. Uh, to come and play. Um, Carl. Someone's just mentioned text-to-speech in chat, and I realize I haven't put text-to-speech on myself. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> do check out our sponsors. We have a few. Uh, Mage Hand Press, uh, for all of your 5e expansion needs. They have 25% discount on all of their PDFs at the moment to support social distancing. If you're interested, tune in tomorrow at 6pm EDT, uh, where uh, I have... Um, where we are, where we stream the Fae Folio, which is their Feywild expansion, run by Mackenzie Lane DA, who is also the lead writer of Cena Una, if, you've, if you're familiar with that one. Uh, also, check out the Deck of Many. The Deck of Many have a Kickstarter, Kickstarter running right now uh, for some more animated uh, animated cards, reference cards of 5e. They're currently kickstarting level 6 to 9 SRD spells, and uh, the tarot, a, a set of animated tarot cards, which is pretty hype. Pretty hype. Uh, the Kickstarter is doing fantastically well. Um, it's already smashed all, if not most, of its goals. Um, it was funded in 15 minutes uh, and is now at something like 250% or something ridiculous like that. Go and check it out. And also check out their Humblewood campaign on Thursdays right here at 6pm EDT. I run the game. It's directly out of the book. 
it's a lot of fun and everything's slightly too cute for the disaster that's happening uh, also check out hero forge for all of your miniature needs this is one of the uh, miniatures that was prototyped Ooh. from their hero forge 2.0 uh kickstarter uh 3.1 million dollar kickstarter six thousand percent funded you can see us using the beta color mini creation tool on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. EDT, uh, where me and Alice, we sit together, we drink an obscene amount of coffee, and we create minis together. Um, so come and check that out. It's a bunch of fun. I color in all my all of my favorite uh, all of my favorite characters. It's a good time. And last, but most certainly not least, our latest sponsor, Dungeon Fog. For all of your map making needs, head over to Dungeon Fog. Uh, you can make maps over there, beautiful comprehensive maps. They're kind of top down and you can make them like your buildings and all sorts of things. You can color in all the walls, floors, everything, and you can add all sorts of assets. Uh, it's a bunch of fun. As you update all the assets in your map, your DM notes get updated. And not only that, they have a bunch of uh, premium assets uh, which are available. Uh, and uh, they're available with a 10% discount using my special code SCRATAC. We are going to take a break for about half an hour. About half an hour. Maybe just slightly over. Um, where uh, we're going to set up for our next game. Uh, which is more D&D in Rotting Shadows, run by Witherbrick with cast myself, Madam Gandalf, Insta Riddler, and Panita. Three, four. Yes, that's all of them. Uh, so tune in for that, and uh, um, as always, keep on evoking emotions. Now, if you like to, any, if you like the music that plays in the background, check out these credits. That's where all the attribution licenses and a link so that you can go and play it yourself. Until next time, everyone, keep on evoking emotions, and we will see you later. Bye. 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 Bye.